All right, so we're logged in. Now what? So let's hide this box if we're not logged in. And actually, let's provide a way to log out while we're at it. Yeah, let me do that first. Log out. So br. Ah. Br. Um, br. Add some line breaks. Let's add a href. Um, remember, I just do a href in general for like things that are features, not routes. If it's a route, I just do a href equals pound slash sign up or whatever. But if it's like a feature, like do this thing, um, then I just do a href and do like an ng click. So I'm going to do that here. Like ng, uh, I'm going to do log out. Um, it's going to be a link. And then ng click equals log out right there. Okay. Let's see how that looks. It looks nice. It's like a little link I'm going to click. So let's make that function. Um, so we have scope dot sign in. Let's have scope dot log out. This is a simple function. All I do is this. Um, I take everything I did over here and undo it. Everything I did when I logged in, I'm going to undo all that. So for cookies.put, I'm going to do cookies. Dot, I think it's remove. Let's take a look. Cookies.remove. Yeah. So cookies.remove. Cookies.remove. And I just have the name, so I don't have the data. Cookies.remove. And then group scope.token equals null. Two ways. I could do it two ways. I could do root scope.token equals null, or I could do delete. Um, delete root scope dot token. That's another way you can do it. Both of them work fine. Um, very slight differences. So that's it. Once I do that, it should be uh, the page should be like, oh, they're not logged in anymore. Log out. Oh, I had to refresh it. Log out. Done. And if I refresh this, there's no more cookies. So that's it. Log in, log out. So when you're logged out, you don't want to be able to submit a tweet. Sorry, meow. So again, just like the other thing, um, ng hide, or sorry, ng show equals current user. So copy um, like that and refresh. So there we go. What I did was I put ng show equals current user on the uh, new meow area. So you're only gonna see it when you're logged in. So let's try day five, day five, log in successfully signed in boom there we go and let's get rid of those pesky alert boxes let me get rid of that i'll keep the one for a bad login i'll keep that one is that the only one i have yeah let's just do that so yeah and i'm signed in blah 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 uh, let me get rid of the uh token logging i don't need that anymore um so let me refresh that okay i'm logged in right now i can make a, a meow hello there Submit, and there we go. But there's a slight problem. I can still delete everyone's meows. So imagine if you're on Twitter, you could just delete anyone's tweets. That's just not going to work. I mean, your website's going to get, people are not going to enjoy that, that feature. So we got to make it so that you can only delete your own. In order to do that, we need to associate whose meows are whose. So let's do that first. Um, every time you do submit new meow, um, let's add our authorization token. Let's add our token that we've been holding on to. So let's do that. Um, how do you do that? That's a good question. Let me Google HTTP. So we need to add a header. Um, Let's see. Let's go to our post, http.post config. That's what it was, config. Um, let's Google HTTP with header, or HTTP post with header. With header. Post with header. Uh, that's not what I need. How to set parameters sent to send request parameters. 
Uh, headers. Okay, that's what it is. Headers, headers, headers. So it's a little tricky. Um, so there's a third argument to the post function, and it's your options. And in the options, you could have one called headers. And in headers, it's another object. It's a nested object. And there's one header called um, authorization. And we're going to set that equal to our root scope dot token. So let's come on, let's do some new lines here. So root scope dot token. Okay. So this should make it a little bit clearer. So there's three arguments to http.post actually. I mean, in JavaScript, you can leave out some arguments. That's perfectly okay. They'll just be null. And usually the libraries can account for that. So Angular is pretty well drawn out. So you can do one or two, one, like one, two, or three arguments. Um, I could leave off the headers argument, you know, or the config argument. So the first argument is the route. The second argument is the payload, which is the new meow. And the third argument that we just added is the headers. And that contains our token, our nifty little token. So on the server side, we need to figure out from that token what's going on here. So um, here's the route where I post the meows, where I make a new one. And let's just say um, var token equals rec dot headers. Let me just confirm how that works actually. Um, we're using express, so I do express js um, get headers. Um, how to extract the HTTP headers from a request? Rec dot headers. Okay, that's what it is. Rec dot headers, and then authorization. Authorization. You can do it like this, or you can do like rec dot headers dot authorization. I think both of those work. Let's just try it out real quick. Um, let's do console.log token, save that. Uh, let's bring up our server. Let's refresh this. And let's just say hi. Okay, so yeah, there we go. We got our token. So now here is the other thing you can do with JWT simple. I'm gonna go back to closing all these. JWT simple. We need to decode this token and figure out who exactly is making this meow. So we do jwt.decode. Um, so I'm going to copy that. I'm going to paste that here. Let me get rid of this guy. Um, so this is going to be user, basically. JWT, because remember the token, when, we, when you log in, um, where's the login or sign in? we're encoding the user, which is the username and password. It's an object containing the username and password. We're encoding it. So we're gonna decode it now. Um, so we're gonna decode it using, from the tokens you specified. And the secret is still the same secret. So that's how we encode and decode it. We use the, the secret key that we put up here. And then once we decode it, we have our user object. And so once we have our user object, we have the username because user.username. So in addition to the text, we can actually do username. Or we could do, there's a couple ways you do it. You could do username or we can do user. In fact, user might be better. Because um, for username, we would do user.username. But um, I like to do things by IDs. So we really do user.underscore ID. Because remember how every single object in our database has an ID. So we're going to take the ID and use that for cross-referencing. So you know how every user has an ID, every meow has an ID? Every meow is now going to reference a user's ID so we know who who made that post. So save that. So let's do this. Let me take a real quick look at our current meows, db.meows.find. Okay, so they just have text right now. Let's see how it looks when we insert a meow that has a that has a user object. 
So let's just say test. Submit. Um, nothing happened. Oops. I think there was just an error. Let's try this again. I think there's a problem with node mod on Windows, to be honest. Let's try this one more time. Oh, it did come back. Let me delete these. All right, let me try this one more time. Test. Okay. So let's see what happens. Okay, see now my newest meow has a user on it now. So now I know who did it. So now this is key information. So on, in fact, in addition to the user, I, wanna, I, wanna, I do wanna say their username actually, cause I do wanna easily see who, who's doing what. So let's do user.username. Let's save that one more time. And let's do one more, one more. Uh, submit that. Ah oh, man. Oh, 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 it says unexpected identifier because I forgot to put a comma. If you don't put a comma, it's like, whoa, where did this come from? So always remember to do commas in your object here. So, okay, restarted the server. Here's our database. Let me refresh the page. And let's try test two. Okay, it added it. Let's take a look at our database. And there we go, we have our user ID and our username. The reason I added username is because I do want to display everyone's username easily. Um, again, there's a no bunch of ways you can do it, but I'm just keeping it simple. So let's take a look at our meows. And below the meow, um, I'm going to put username. So I'm going to do br and then meow.username. Save. So let's just refresh that. And there you go, day five. Um, I think Bootstrap comes with like a small tag, so I'm gonna make it nice and small. I don't like it being the same size as everything else. Okay, right there, day five. Um, just so you know who did it. Okay, so you, you can still, see not all of them have it because I just, I just added that feature, but let me delete all these guys. In real life, if you add this feature after the fact, you're gonna have to go into your database and add the usernames to everything. So test three, hello again. So now my name is on all of them. So now I can log out. I can go to sign up. I can go to Dave six, sign up, success. Let me go back to mittens. Let me log in, Dave six, Dave six, log in. Okay, and let me try, hi, I'm Dave six. Dave six, submit. Okay, you see my username is different now, but I can still delete this guy. That's not good. I don't want to be able to delete other people, so let's change that real quick. So when I remove the meow, let's keep the front end the same. When I remove it, it does this. I take my meow, I call this route, um, but let's, let's add the headers. Let's identify ourselves, because I want to make the server make sure you're the person. So I'm going to add these headers to here. So we're gonna do that third argument again. So let's go to the server. Um, let's get the user, just like we did for the posting. Where is it? Right here. Um, so after, so what we're gonna do is this. Um, in the remove function for, so first we get the meows collection using the MongoDB driver then the second thing that we were doing before was just simply removing the object using the ID of the uh, meow that is specified. But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna, we're gonna add another um, qualification to our remove function. We're gonna make sure that you are the owner by um, also stating that the username of the meow is equal to user.username that we decoded over here. Remember we decoded the user object, just like we did for new meow. We're gonna do it again here. We're gonna decode the user object because we're specifying it in the headers. Um, we're gonna decode it and then we're gonna say, the user that we just decoded, let's check out their username. Make sure it matches the username of the, actually, you know, it's better to, 
uh, actually, this will work. You could also do user dot underscore ID um, and check to make sure the user does it, and then do ob object ID. I don't know this might be a little confusing for a beginner, but object ID you can also compare to make sure the ID of the user on the meow is the same as the ID of the person. In fact, this is the proper way to do it. So I think you should do this. So now when I remove a meow, not only am I checking the ID that was specified, but I'm also checking the decoded user to make sure it matches up with the user who owns it. So let's try this out. Um, so we restart the server and I refresh the page. Now let me try to remove day five. See, it didn't delete it. Let me try this one. Oh, it didn't do it either. So something's not working. Um, user user.id. Let me just log this to make sure console.log oops, user.id why isn't it working? okay, let me try it one more time okay, it logs the user's ID so it's got that and then uh, so why isn't it finding that user user ID, let me check the database to make sure it's got everything the user is there. Uh, hmm. Object ID, user ID. Now that should work. Why is that working? Let me just check the meow ID. Console.log. Meow ID. Save that. No. And then. See it on the server. Okay. User ID is 444. Meow ID is 445. Let me just see real quick um, the server. User ID 444, 445. Yeah, it's there. Oh, we're saving it as a string. That's why. Um, so we really don't need this object ID. That's really just the string. The reason I know that is because it says object ID here, but here it doesn't. It's just the way we did it. It's fine. It all works. It's all good. It's not optimal, but uh, let me get rid of these things now. Okay, so let's try it one more time. Remove. No. Didn't work. Oh, let me restart this. Again, NodeMon doesn't always work quite right on Windows. And boom, gone. This one, boom, boom, not gone. Let's do a new one, new one. Submit. Boom, gone. Haha, -ha, still can't delete these two. So there we go. We have ourselves a little thing that you can't affect other people's meows. So stay tuned. We're going to release this to the world. See you later.